Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the uh, short exercises that were assigned in the digital study guide for chapter nine. Note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text materials again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. So uh, we're picking up with exercise uh, 9-4. This is about commitments and contingencies. So Fat Boy Motorcycles, a motorcycle manufacturer, included the following note in its annual report. The company self-insures its product liability losses in the United States up to one and a half million. Catastrophic coverage is maintained for individual claims in excess of 1.5 million up to 30 million. Okay, so why are product liability losses considered contingent liabilities? Okay, um, you know, when you look in the book um, and you look up the definition of contingent liability, it basically says it arises as the result of a past event. It is dependent upon the outcome of a future event. Okay, so um, basically what you're doing is, is you know, your you know some past event but it doesn't have a future action just yet that that's what a contingent liability is the solution says these are contingent liabilities because at the time the financial statements were issued fat boy motorcycles was not liable for any of these product losses they represent potential rather than actual obligations and that's the key they represent potential rather than actual uh, obligations um, Maybe to, to be able to put this in a little bit more um, realistic um, uh, a realistic uh, thinking about this. Um, actually, today I saw an article on the internet where um, General Motors, um, they have faulty ignition switches. And uh, they're looking at the tune of two billion dollars of uh, liability. Like they they feel like they're going to get banged um, in lawsuits uh, because of those faulty ignition switches for two billion dollars. And the article today was about a high-profile lawyer who actually took on you know him and two other uh, lawyers have actually been. Def uh, lawyers for the defendants against GM and have won uh, quite a few cases um, where GM has paid out for the faulty ignition switch. Now let's think about this. Let's say GM produced 5,000 cars, okay? Um, and they all have these faulty ignition switches, okay? So GM knows about this and so this is, you know, they're looking at two billion dollars in liability, right? But are they going to, you know, will they um, uh, will they pay off on those 5,000 cars that have the faulty ignition switch? No. So this is a contingent liability in that um, they're looking at, oh, this is, you know, this is what we're a past event. The past event being we put in the faulty ignition switches, but it's dependent upon the future action. You know, maybe out of those 5,000 cars, let's just say 500, all right, um, actually, you know, they end up seeing lawsuits for only uh, 500 of those. Well, when they have the 500 lawsuits, that's the actual um, uh, obligation, okay? Um, so they're booking, they're, they're uh, looking at their contingent liabilities and saying, they're looking at their liability and they're calling it contingent in the amount of two billion, but their actual will end up being something in the future. But they, you know, so they 
uh, they're kind of like guesstimating, all right, um, uh, this two billion, and because it's uh, uh, a past event for these 5,000 vehicles, but it's based upon the future, which is however many people will actually produce the lawsuit. Now, going back to the story about the high-profile lawyer, you know, he's won many cases against GM, okay, and he's, you know, GM has paid off those lawsuits. However, there is one uh, person who was actually trying to scam um, the, uh, uh, who, you know, who, well, let me back up. Uh, there was a, a guy who was listening to the radio about this lawsuit, and uh, they mentioned a person's name. And this person um, had actually, in the past, wrote a uh, bad check uh, um, in the tune of 441400 and some odd dollars, right? Um, in order to buy a home. And what they did was, was the check was only originally for like the 400 and I believe it was like $80 or so was a check. But what they did was they forged an additional 441 in order to buy, quote unquote, their dream home. All right. And the person who was listening to the radio and heard that, you know, they called up and said, hey, look at the people, who, you know, that person is, um, you know, this is because. Uh, it's a scam operation because why these people um, are using this here situation of the faulty ignition switch and they're being defended by this high profile lawyer saying that because of this they're losing their dream home and blah 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 okay so what ended up happening is is the judge um, kind of like said uh, uh you know and they actually dismissed those the that team of lawyers um, against prosecuting GM and uh, they're going to be replaced because of this person, um, you know, uh, trying to scam uh, GM. But anyway, that was in the news today. All right, so uh, to continue on with this, so this gives you an idea as to what, uh, how contingencies work. So second question says, how can a contingent liability become a real liability for Fat Boy Motorcycle? Right, the contingent can become a real liability if the user of a fat boy product suffers a loss for which the company is responsible that's just like you know these 5,000 vehicles 500 of them actually uh, the faulty ignition switch actually affects them and they you know produce the lawsuit okay so hopefully you understood that go back and um, uh, watch it again remember it's about a past event contingencies are about a past event against which we have uh, future action, okay? That's what a contingent liability is. All right, 9-5. Um, Link Company issued a 280,000 4% mortgage on January 1st, 2014 to purchase a building. Uh, payments of 8055 were made semi-annually. Complete the following amortization schedule, partial for link company, round to the nearest dollar. Okay, so we're accounting for mortgages. Um, really, this, uh, uh, this should be relatively easy. Um, I'm not going to go back over um, a lot of the theory. If you had math for business and finance or math applications, um, we already discussed, you already saw about how to account for mortgages. So if you're unsure of that, um, you know, of what you're doing here in this particular chapter, if you reread the chapter or, um, you know, you think about it and you're still not sure, go back to your math and even go out to the student community and watch the videos uh, for how to handle mortgages there. I'm not going to go back over the theory of it because this is something that was already covered extensively in, in the math and in the, uh, the textbook. So I'm just going to basically work out the problem here. Okay. So let's see here. Um, so Ling issued a 280,000. All right. So that's its balance on January 1st. Right. And it's a 4% mortgage. Okay. So, um, and it's every six months. Okay. So, um, it made a payment on June 30th, which they're making payments every six months, okay? And they want to know what the interest in the principal is, 
right? And the, the loan balance during that uh, time frame. So um, we start out with, you know, so they're making, it's making a payment of 8,055, right? Um, and that's what the payment is going to be each and every time. 8,055, 8,055, okay? So I'm just gonna simplify this, just put a check mark against these, all right? So um, one, two, three, uh, one check mark too many. So every six months, it, there's going to be a payment of 8,055. Now that payment is apportioned between principal and interest. So in the first payment, we have um, 200, and, well, let me do the math down here. We have 280,000, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by 4% of interest, and it's for every six months, so six over 12, all right? So if we do the math of 280,000, right, times 4%, and it times that by six, we end up with 67,200 over 12. So we divide 67,200, divide that by 12, and we end up with $560, uh, $5,600 in interest. So it's $5,600 in interest. And if we take the 8,055 and subtract the 5,600, we end up with 5, 5, 4, 24, 55 in principle. 24, 55 in principle. Now, our loan balance is 280,000, okay? We're not subtracting the payment of 8,000. We only paid off, remember, that's a principal amount, that 280,000. So we have the 280,000 and we have to subtract the 2455, and that gives us a new loan balance of 277,545, okay? So that's our new loan balance, right? Now, basically, what we just did, and I'll do it one more time, I'm not gonna do it all four times, right? That's all we're going to do you know, as we continue on down the page, except now, instead of using the balance of 280,000, we're going to use the balance of 277,545. We always use the new loan balance, all right, in order to calculate our interest. So I'm going to have 277,000, all right, so I, wait a minute, let me back up just one second. So that was for June 30th. Now we're going to work on December 31st, right? Six months later, we're going to make a payment of $8,055, right? What's the principal and what's the interest? So we start with 277,545 because that's the amount that we're, you know, that's the remaining amount that we're uh, borrowing against at 4% interest times 6 over 12. So 277. 545 times 4% times 6 is 66,610.80. And we divide that by 12. And we get um, rounding five, uh, $5,550.90. So we're going to round it to $5,551. Right, so that's our interest for December 31st, $5,551. So if that's our interest and our payment was $8,055, we subtract the $5,551 and we get a principal amount of $2,504. Right, so our principal as part of that payment is $2,504. Now, our previous loan balance was 277545 and we're going to subtract out the amount of the principal that we paid, the, the 2504 and that gives us a new loan balance of 
275,041. Right? 275,041. Right? So that's the, all there is to doing that. Um, uh, you know, you do the same exact thing for June and then December. Um, I'm not going to work that out. You can, you know, uh, work out the numbers yourself and then double check them with the solution. Okay. So if you didn't understand that, um, you know, like I said, go back and read the book. Go back to your math for business uh, and app, uh, business and finance or your math applications. Um, and go over the mortgage and amortization sections there in order to, uh, you know, review that theory. And if you still don't get it, then, you know, feel free to contact an instructor. Okay. I'll see you in the next video for the next uh, exercise.